I'm Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice in the, in the world. And we have another one of our exciting Black Buddhist lectures for you today. Now please understand that we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association present to you Black Buddhist lectures. We are like a black radio station. It means that we are cultural, not racial. So when we speak, we speak in the dialect of our black culture. Now, there's a lot that's going on here. You see, there's culture, there's history, and there's language. You see, my lecture today is Sanskritization, the mother of white supremacy. The KKK, Nazism and all forms of racism comes from Sanskrit. The basis of white racism comes from the white relationship to the Sanskrit language. Most black Buddhists trained by Asians support Sanskrit. Sanskritization is to whitewash or to change history or to promote the concept of white superiority. Now, the most historical reference of whitewashing is Sanskritization. Now, it is Sanskritization to give whites and Asian races a nut or satisfaction. See, Sanskritization is whitewashing of the Buddhist religion and history. See, scientifically, it is proven that all human life originated in Africa. See, archaeology, anthropology, literary science, genetic science, we can prove that all human life comes from Africa. Most white people historically got their understanding of world history from the Bible. Now let's tie this into Buddhism so you can kind of get an understanding. You see, the biblical character Noah had an important role in the way Europeans or white people saw themselves. You see, Noah was said to have three sons. There was Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Now, Ham was cursed by his father, Noah, when he saw his father's nakedness. Now, Ham's children were cursed to be slaves. Now, 19th century Europeans assumed that black Africans was Hamites, or descendants of the accursed Ham, destined to be an inferior race of slaves. Now, the descendants of Shem became the Semites or Shemites. Now, who included Jews. Now, the Jews were hated in Europe who spoke Semitic languages of the Bible, but they hated the Jews because the Jews were Semite and the Jews had black ancestry. Now, that left white Europeans as descendants of Japheth. Now, it had been assumed that European languages had somehow descended from biblical languages. You see, anti-Semitism in Europe demanded that the people of Europe were the race favored by God as the leading race of people. You see, before the Germans even kicked out or oppressed the Jews, the French had already done it and other European countries had already persecuted the Jews way before the Germans did it. Now, White or European people had to come up with a way to show white superiority and they did not want to be attached to the Semites or to black people. Now, the white answer to white supremacy was Sanskritization. See, all white people had to do is rewrite history 
and show white supremacy via linguistics. White people use the concept of Sanskrit to prove white superiority. You see, Sanskritization was a way to reproduce a new word of Sanskrit from existing words. In this way, the Brahmins created new language by the method of Sanskritization. You see, this is what they did. You see, Sanskrit is not a new language per se. What they did, or what Panini, who is the father of Sanskrit, what he did was took the black language of Pali or Parskit and he took the words and he changed the meaning of the words to come with a Sanskrit definition. That's how they created Sanskrit. Now, now, do not take my word for it. White people call Sanskrit the mother of all languages. And if you let them tell it, all languages derived from Sanskrit, Sanskrit is the basis of white racism or rather white superiority. You see, whites and Asians call Sanskrit sacred. See, what the white people did was white races got together and they embraced Sanskrit because number one, they didn't want to endorse nothing or embrace something that was related to the Jews and the Semites. So they saw this story or they learned this story in India about a group of people called Aryans. And this false sense of Aryan or this history of the Aryans gave the white people a new meaning. See, they came into India and they saw the system where white was at the top and black was at the bottom and the Brahmins that was in control. See, it was the Brahmins that led the whites to, to know or to believe that there was a race that came from Europe that were called the Aryans. See, what they did was, it was the Sanskrit language that misled the white races or how they used it. You see, it was Max Muller. Max Muller was born in Germany, but he was he lived in England and he translated the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda is one of was the so-called ancient teachings of the Aryans. And so through the Rig Veda and the translation of the Rig Veda. Now, Max Muller never went to India, but he learned Sanskrit and he translated the language of Sanskrit. And from that time, white people began to get an orgasm. I mean, man, if you really want to know what happened, in 1938 and 1939, Man, the guy who got the biggest orgasm on Sanskrit was Hitler. Adolf Hitler got so enamored and got so excited, he sent an expedition of people to learn about this so-called Sanskrit. And it was Hitler that used Sanskrit as the basis of Aryan or white superiority. You see, in Sanskrit. Sanskrit is the language of the culture of the Brahmins in India. Now, this is the time in history where the world reached a new epoch. Whereas this is the first time in the history of humankind that humans became separated by race, culture, and language. This system originated in India. It was called the caste system. Now, the word caste means varna, a color, whereas humans became separated by the color, and the whites were at the top and the blacks at the bottom. See, this is the first time in world history where light-skinned people use language, culture, and history to write black people out of history and create white superiority. See, the racist process was called Sanskritization, or a method to whitewash world history. You see, this is 
is the time in history that the white king Kanishka changed the Buddha from black to white. Not only did he change the Buddha from black to white, he changed the history and writings of Buddhism from the black language of Pali or Paskit to the so-called white language of Sanskrit. See, King Kanishka created a new Buddhism called Mahayana Buddhism. Now, the Mahayanas were Brahmins and they rewrote the Buddhist teachings and this is where we get the Sanskrit version. See, the Mahayanas were the Brahmins and follows the Sanskrit. You see, it was a big fight in India. You see, the Mahayanas were the Brahmins. They were the white racist Brahmins and the people in India were the Muryams. See, the Muryams, it started off with, uh, a, it, was, it was King Asoka. See, King Asoka's grandfather was Chandra Gupta Maurya. He was a Maurya. See, it was back years ago, Alexander the Great tried to conquer India, and he ran up against the Nandas. Well, Alexander, you know, with the Nandas, they had 80,000 elephants, and, and Alexander the Great said, hell no, I'm not going to try to conquer these black folk in India. But what happened was, there was another group of black, black bad people, they were called the Muriams, and the Muriams actually controlled India up into the time of 185 B.C., when Push Yavitra Sangha killed the last uh, Muriam king, Brit Brihadatta. He killed him in broad daylight and they set up a Brahman cult. This is 185 BC and all of the black Buddhists ran to their brothers in Nubia. See, it was it was the father of history who wrote us who wrote that Muro was the cradle of the gymnosophists because the black people went to Muro, which was the land of Nubia. Now, in India, they kill all the Buddhists. Now, they set up this caste system, or they were trying to set up the caste system, and they brought in a white person. Now, the white person they brought in, this is about 1900 years ago, they call it the Shaka era. Shaka means, in, in Sanskrit, foreigner. They brought in a foreigner, and his name was King Kanishka. King Kanishka came in, and with his soldiers, he was from the he was from the Afghanistan of the Kushan dynasty. They set up a dynasty, and the Kushans they were practicing. They were they got introduced to Buddhism through a former Brahmin by the name of Ashvagosha. Ashvagosha introduced Buddhism to King Kanishka, and what they did was they came up with their own. Second, fourth Buddhist council, whereas they changed the language, the culture of Buddhism, and they changed the Buddha from black to white. You could see this by the Ganhara images because King Kanishka made Ganhara his uh, headquarters or his capital. Now, what happened was they came up with this new Buddhism and this new culture, and all of this happened because of Sanskrit. Now, the largest writing in the history of humankind is the Buddhist writings of the Pali Canon. This is the first of the largest evidence of any religious writings in the history of mankind. The Pali Canon is about 14 times larger than the Bible, and if you take all of the writings of Judaism, uh, Christianity and Islam, when you put all that together, the Pali Canon would still be three times as large as all of that put together. It's the largest religious work in the world, and it's called the Pali Canon. It comes from Pali, or Pasket. Now, the Vedics created a new language called Sanskrit. Now, listen to this. The first archaeological evidence of Sanskrit is called the Rudra Dana. The Rudra Dana came about in the AD. Now, this is how white people got an orgasm or how they went off. See, what they did was in Syria, 
there was a document in Syria, and what they did was they saw this document in Syria it was about 1500 BC, and it looked like or it resembled Sanskrit. And so what they did was they got together and they appropriated this and called it Sanskrit. And they says the white language goes 1500 years. And when you talk, when you go into the 19th century, all of the white people, all of the white scholars got together. They converged on India. They converged on Sanskrit. And they used this. Now, the Mahayanas were the Brahmins. Now, the Mauryans, they were the black people. Now, how do we know about the Muriams? Because King Ahsoka left edicts. He left edicts in writing in the language called Karasi. Karasi was a Paskit or a black language. Now, what is most urgent for black people to understand is how Sanskrit was used to extricate and to perpetuate racism. We created the Proud Black Buddhist World Association to reject the Sanskrit of Buddhist teachings. Please understand that whites and Europeans had conquered the world. They hated the idea and the Bible of Jews who were Semite that had black blood. Whites needed some evidence to prove white superiority. What excited white races so much and that gave them an organ orgasm was Sanskrit. The Hindus told a false history in their Vedas that Indo-Aryans conquered the black indigenous people of India and their light-skinned Brahmins who ruled India were ancestors to a superior white, white race called Aryans. Now, white people worldwide literally got a nut the British dispatch Sir William Jones to India. People look up, I want you to look up a free book. Now Google this, it's called the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. See, European scholars will let you know that there were not any white people in ancient India. See, the Indus Valley Civilization, they lived on the Sari Wati River. And they lived on the Saravati River and they created a city that was so complex. They had running water, indoor toilets. They were one of the most sophisticated cultures and city planners in the history of mankind. In fact, it took white people, meaning Rome, 2,000 years to build a city that was comparable to the Indus Valley Civilization. From the Indus Valley Civilization, came the Magadha Empire that was started by Sisu Naga. And the Magadha Empire is where the Buddha comes from. You see, at the time of the Buddha, there was no such language as Sanskrit. There is no archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, any kind of science that shows Sanskrit. You see, the most influential white scholar was German Max Muller, who translated the Rig Veda, or the so-called Vedic text. It was the writings of Matt Muller that led white people to the Aryan invasion theory. White races in the 19th century used Sanskrit to advance the theory of white superiority. There were tablets etched in a language called Hurrian. Now, the documents refer to a treaty signed by the kings of Mitanni kingdom this is in Syria, that lasted about 200 years, around 1500 BC. The words resemble Sanskrit and white races used this finding to promote white superiority. Their argument was that Sanskrit was the oldest and the most perfect language was of white origin brought to Syria and India by invading white people. Now, white people call this romancing. In the hood, we call this getting a nut. Now, white people literally got a nut on Sanskrit. The white man who got the biggest nut in Sanskrit was Adolf Hitler. You see, just Google Adolf Hitler in Sanskrit. Between 1938 and 
1939, Hitler sent an expedition to India to collect Sanskrit manuscripts. Hitler was not only brought into the Hindu racist fraud, the racist Hindu convinced Hitler so strongly that Hitler declared himself as Lord of the Aryans and Brahmins in India, and, and, the, and, and the Brahmins in India declared Hitler the tenth incarnation or avatar of the Brahmin God. This is what white races do not understand. There never was white people in history called Aryans who conquered black people and put them in the caste system. While creating their Sanskrit language, the black Indian, uh, from the black Indian Prescript languages, the Brahmin used the highly word Arya or Arya and converted it into Sanskrit word Arya or Aryan. In the Pali language, this means great noble beings. See, Shaka Muni Buddha used this term. They did what is called Sanskriptation via creating a false history of Aryans or white people who conquered the indigenous black people. See, they created what is called an Aryan or people called Javidians to promote white racism. See, the racist white world brought into the concept or they bought into the concept of Sanskriptization. See, Sanskriptization is not only the theory of white superiority based on the Aryan invasion theory. Sanskriptization is the rewrite of history. In the 19th century, white people fell in love with Sanskrit and they romanticized on Sanskrit. In the words of the hood, white folk got a nut or an oil gathered from Sanskrit. To this very day, white nations believe that there once existed ancient white people called Aryans. They are also called Indo-Aryans. This white lie came about because of a language called Sanskrit. It was British historian Godfrey Higgins who wrote in the book, The Origins of Sanskrit, proved that Sanskrit was an artificial language. People never spoke Sanskrit. It was only the language of the Romans. We conclude this lecture in regards to, proud, to the proud black British World Association. We are drawing the line of demarcation between proud black Buddhists and black Buddhists. You see, the line that we draw is Sanskritization. See, let me share a, this history with you. It was Dr. Pihemru and Becker doing a debate on the draft of the Indian Constitution. Dr. M. Becker asked the Brahmin intellectuals to produce any mantra which could produce gold if their Vedas are treasure houses of science. But no one came forward. You see, Dr. M. Becker, they would not teach him Sanskrit because he was a Chandela or a Dalit or a, he had black ancestors, so they wouldn't teach him Sanskrit. I think he had to go to Europe to learn Sanskrit, but once he read the Vedas, he saw how ridiculous they were. He straightened out the nonsense that Max Muller had put, and Dr. M. Becker challenged them Brahmins. He said, show me one drop, one ounce of archaeological evidence of these Vedas, and it'll be over. Nobody came forward because what they did was if you tell a lie a hundred times, at the at 99 times, at the 100 times you begin to believe it, and white folk believed in Sanskrit. Now, see, Sanskrit was used by Nazis. See, Hindus are Nazis. See, the Nazis joined together a political alliance. That was Hitler, that was Mussolini, and that was Tojo. See, Tojo was the prime minister of Japan, and the Japanese had adopted this Sanskrit and they used this Sanskrit as a means of white superiority. Tojo was the prime minister of Japan. 
the Japanese attitude came from this Sanskritization of Buddhism, whereas all of the black history, culture, and language was extricated out of the Buddhist religion. Now, the way the Japanese teach it, do you the Sanskrit and extricate black history? They teach in delusion because they are teaching white superiority and the extrication of black history, culture, and language is racism. Anyway, I am Anthony Albelmore, President and Founder of Proud Black Buddhist World Association.